Welcome back to the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show alongside Haley Stasiak. I'm Jordan Ham. now joined by Gilbert head coach Derek Zellner. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, having me on. So it, you're in a very tough 5A Santan region this year. Uh, as it stands right now, all teams could be making the postseason. Um, as you're navigating this, you know, you're, you're playing some, some pretty tough rosters and your, your roster numbers are, are quite a bit uh, less than some of those other teams. Just how has your uh, coaching staff been able to kind of utilize this roster and get the most out of them navigating this tough 5A? Well, we just basically play Ironman football, and uh, there's nobody coming off the field, really. We just try to do a good job of our coaches juggling uh, substitution. You know, basically we've got a roster of, you know, 32 to 34 kids, you know, you take away two kickers, um, we're pretty low. But we uh, that's what they've gotten accustomed to, and that's just uh, how we operate at Gilbert High School currently. Your junior quarterback, Will Plummer, has broken out this year. He's got nearly 2,500 passing yards, 372 rushing yards. How have you seen him come into his own this season? Well, you know, he's uh, really matured since the spring. Um, he is a fiery competitor, for sure. Um, you know, we had the pleasure to have having uh, the older brother, Jack, for three years. And as much as they are the same, they are uh, completely different in the same uh, token as well. Uh, I just told, uh, you know, I called Will into the office and said, hey, you know, if you do what I ask you to do, you're going to have a great season. I sometimes say we have a love-hate relationship. We don't always agree with what we, uh, we want to accomplish. Um, but um, I, I wouldn't trade him for any court, other quarterback in the world. Uh, personally, you know, he's he, he's like a I, w I don't want to say a son, but he's like a little brother to me. And, and Jack was the same. So uh, it's it's been great having those two in the program for the past few years since uh, since uh, arriving at Gilbert High School. And, and Will's just done a great job. He's grown exponentially over the months and from spring at the seven on seven and through camp and then you know what we've seen in the season i mean how do you go into a sunrise mountain game and throw for nearly 670 yards and you know six or seven tds and rack up 57 points and unfortunately we lost that game but um, he's done a great job and he, he continues to grow week in and week out you were a quarterback yourself at Dobson High, won a state champion there, state championship there excuse me in 1987 do you see yourself in well at all uh, the game has changed uh, significantly <laughs> since uh, 30 years ago. Um, but yeah, there's 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 a lot of qualities. Um, just you know, fiery competitor to do whatever it takes to win the game. You know, that's the way I was, and I, I see that in him. And the love for the game. You know, we we both have a love for the game that um, you got to have in order in order to succeed. And uh, I see that in him. And, you know, that's why I'm in coaching. I mean, I love football so much, and I had great mentors that drove me down this road that, you know, God has put me in this position, and, you know, I guess it's me paying it forward, and I've just been blessed to have the kids that I've gotten to coach over the years to, uh, to be a part of it over the years of uh, being an assistant or a head coach. The passing game's really thriving for you guys this year with Will Plummer, but you also had to replace last year your top five receivers in terms of yards, And but Will's been able to spread the ball around. Five guys this year have at least two touchdown, or touchdown receptions. Um, just how has that group stepped up within the passing game? Well, and, you know, when we went into the offseason last year, we told kids, hey, we're losing 23 seniors. It's the next man up. Who, who's going to answer the bell? And that's the beauty of the offense that we run. You, you tell you tell Will or the other receivers, Connor McKernan, Anthony Hill, DeMarco, Mesa, um, whoever's in there, listen, guys, this, this is the beauty of the offense. There's, anybody's got an opportunity to touch the ball in every single play. And um, Will has done a great job of distributing the ball all over the field, whether it's to the, our wideouts, to our slots, to the back out of the backfield, to the tight end. Um, that's what makes our offense fun, and that's what makes it fun for the kids. They really enjoy, uh, you know, coming to practice and doing the things that we do in, in regards to the passing game. So they, they, they're having a blast. And, and, again, Will's done a tremendous job of, of getting the ball out to, to the receivers so we can be successful. You've played pretty too good 
two pretty good offenses in Williamsfield and Castile these past couple weeks. What have you learned about your defense in those two games and just this season overall? Well, you know, we played tremendously well versus uh, Williamsfield. We played tremendously well versus Campo Verde. We beat Campo Verde. Unfortunately, you know, when it, when it came to the Williamsfield game, we just missed a few opportunities here and there. And then we step into the Castillo game last week, and, you know, we roll into fall break, and it seemed as if uh, we were already on fall break before we even hit the field. <laughs> and, uh, um, you, you know, sometimes you get up so much for a, a game, which we did for Williamsfield, you know, it was a, a close battle. And then sometimes the next week you, you think you're prepared, and, you know, maybe we were just kind of maybe – you know, quote unquote, hung over from the emotional high of the previous week's uh, versus uh, Williamsfield that we just didn't come as prepared as we thought we were or needed to be versus Castile. And, and nothing against Castile. They, they've got a great program. We played great for about a quarter and a half, and then we just we checked out and went to fall break already. So we're hoping that this week, I uh, gave the kids off until Thursday, uh, we get back to practice and we prep for Higley and we come with a better mindset. You know, there's people out there that call us Jekyll and Hyde because you don't know what team you're going to get. Um, unfortunately, you know, we sit and kind of look at each other and go, gosh, well, what team's going to show up this evening? But, you know, that, that, that comes down to me, that the head coach of having them ready to play. So, you know, our defense does great. We've told the kids, if you just do what we tell you to do, you will succeed. Sometimes we venture off on a different path, and sometimes the kids think they know more than the coaches, and sometimes that, that bites them in the butt. So, so that's our goal for this week to getting them back on get getting them back on track. So for the the rest of the regular season, as you're gearing up for the postseason, is the the message then and kind of the focus just continued consistency for the final couple of weeks of the regular season? Well, you know, Gilbert hasn't been to the playoffs since 2011, and when we took over in 2015, we said, "Hey, we've got to climb out of this hole that Gilbert is in," and our goal was to get to the playoffs. When I did my interview, I told him, gosh darn, you know, looking at things, this is going to be a five- to seven-year program. This is year four for us, and we're knocking at the door of the playoffs. Last year, you know, we were four and six. We finished the number 16 seed, and we got bumped by an automatic bid. This year, as you, you, as you guys can see, I mean, all six teams in our region are in the top 16. That's, that's unheard of. I mean, that just tells you how tough the Santan region is, and you, there is no gimmies from week in and week out. So, you know, our, our rallying cry to kids is how bad do you want to go to the playoffs? How bad do you want to get Gilbert into the playoffs after a seven, eight-year hiatus? How bad do seniors want a playoff experience? Because once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. You know, our rallying cry, too, is let's improve our playoff seating. We're sitting number 11 in PowerPoint. What are you guys willing to do, and how hard are we willing to work, and what sacrifices are we willing to make to try to improve our seating? You know, Higley's a, a is a tough team. We got to come ready to play. And, and Maricopa, you know, they're doing a tremendous job this year. So the, the last two games aren't easy, but we're, we're going to go out, scratch and claw, and, and coach our tails off, and, and, and practice hard, and, and put ourselves in a good position to try to win both those games on, uh, on the way out. Try to get a good playoff seed. You're taking on Higley this Friday. What have you seen on films, film of the Knights, to kind of get you ready to see what you're going to be able to do against the Knights? Well, you know, um, they've got a great quarterback in uh, Spencer Bratch. Uh, kind of ironic, his dad and I went to junior high and high school together. <laughs> That's pretty so, cool. So, you know you're getting old when you start coaching the kids, uh, <laughs> you know, guys you grew up with, kids. Um, they, they're big uh, on the defensive side of the ball. They've got athletes all over the field. You know, Coach Zuby always has them ready to play. Um, it should be a good matchup. You know, we just got to come. We just got to come ready to play. If we can play with the intensity and the emotion and sense of urgency that we played against Williamsfield and bring that to the Higley game, it should be a good battle. Coach, we appreciate the time, and good luck the rest of the way this year. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on. You guys have a great rest of the week. Thanks, you coach. too, Coach. That's Derek okay, Zellner, bye -bye. the Gilbert head coach. Uh, just a, a really fun team. And I think the, yeah. the biggest takeaway for me, I, I've tracked kind of Gilbert the past couple of years, you know, covered Jack Plummer, Will's older brother. Um, there's no one way to find success in high school football. You know, they can kind of rest on, um, you know, any excuse of, well, we don't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. and, but very clearly to, to Coach Zellner and his coaching staff, 
that's not an excuse. Right. Let, let's let's go out. Let's have a bunch of guys play both ways, make some plays, and you're seeing kind of them go from a one and nine season two years ago to now slowly building up a consistent program. And I'm sure the numbers then will come with that. But um, just uh, I I like what this coaching staff and this program is building into over the next couple of years. My The one thing that I really loved is it's a special relationship between a coach and a player when a coach can say, he's like my little brother. Yeah. We have this love-hate relationship, he's like my little brother. I mean, a lot of times you do hear a coach is saying he's like a son to me or right. a player saying he's like a father to me. And for him to say that he was like a little brother, that's a special relationship to have. And it's a unique one because it's a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. You have that kind of different respect, and obviously I'm sure Will Plummer is just, he's a state championship winning quarterback in Zellner. Right. So cool to have him as a mentor, I'm sure. And it was interesting, you know, the past couple of years watching Jack, I watched him in, in some spring ball workouts, and there were a few times where guys would run the run ra wrong routes or, you know, drop a pass or whatever, and he was not afraid to get on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can tell Coach Zellner has a very high standard for his players. Yes. Jack had a very high standard for his teammates, and he held himself to a very high standard. Sounds like Will's doing the exact same yep. thing. So um, just kind of cool the, the you know, you look at the Purdy's, the Plumbers, there's, yeah. um, you know, the, the Bourdais who we're going to be yep. having next, uh, you know, next segment. There, there's a lot of uh, quarterback families kind of throughout, the, throughout Arizona. Cool. So pretty cool. So uh, coming up next, we have Trenton Bourget, uh, Marana quarterback, um, and I'm, he's going to cover just kind of everything. They have a big matchup against Sienega this weekend. So uh, it will be a very fun game. That's coming up next on the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show.